If you thought that we have our solar system mapped and fully figured out, think again. Because out beyond Neptune and past Pluto and way beyond the Kuiper Belt lies a region so distant and so mysterious we've never seen it directly. It's called the Oort Cloud, a vast sphere of icy objects that marks the edge of our solar system. And every now and then something out there starts moving, which is usually a great setup for either a scientific discovery or a disaster movie. In 2014, astronomers spotted a moving dot in archival data from Dark Energy Survey. At first, it didn't seem like much, but when they ran the numbers, jaws hit the floor. This wasn't just any object. It was a comet, but not the kind we are used to. This thing was massive, over 130 kilometers across. That's bigger than some small moons. Its name, C-2014 UN271 but we're gonna call it the largest comet ever discovered or this comet. And here's the wild part, it's headed toward us. No, not at us, but it is gliding through the outer solar system on a slow motion dive that's bringing it closer than it's been in millions of years. And scientists are watching closely, because this colossal visitor might just hold clues to the very formation of the planets or even the origin of life. So, what exactly is this icy behemoth? Where did it come from? And what secrets is it carrying from the solar system's forgotten frontier? Well, let's find out. In the world of astronomy, most discoveries creep up slowly. A tiny wobble here, a faint blur there. But in 2014, something huge literally appeared in data. A team of astronomers analyzing old images from the Dark Energy Survey based at the Cerro Tololo Observatory in Chile noticed a distant object moving against the background stars. At first glance, it looked like a typical trans-Neptunian object, one of those icy rocks orbiting far beyond Neptune. But then came the orbit calculations, and they didn't add up. This wasn't a static object in the Kuiper Belt. It was moving fast enough to be inbound from deep space. Not just beyond Pluto, not just beyond the scattered disk, but possibly all the way from the Oort Cloud, the most distant reaches of our solar system. The object was officially designated C-2014 UN271, Bernardinelli Bernstein, named after the two astronomers who discovered it. But what really shocked everyone wasn't its orbit, it was its size. Early estimates put this thing at 120 to 150 kilometers in diameter. That's 10 times bigger than a typical comet. For reference, Halley's Comet is only about 11 kilometers wide. Some news outlets even call it a mini moon. And that's not an exaggeration. This wasn't just a comet, it was the largest comet ever discovered. And it was on a slow journey toward the inner solar system, a path it hadn't taken in millions of years. Even though it won't come anywhere near Earth, astronomers realized this was a rare opportunity, possibly a once in a lifetime chance, to study an Oort Cloud object up close. This thing had spent most of its existence in frozen isolation, untouched since the early days of the solar system. If comets are time capsules from the past, this one might be the Rosetta Stone. And as more data came in, the mystery only grew. If you're enjoying watching videos about cosmic mysteries, consider subscribing to our channel, it's free and it helps our mission. Hit the like button if you found this video interesting and share it with a fellow space enthusiast. If you want to become a part of our community, links to Reddit and Discord are in the description below. So where does a 150 km wide comet even come from? To answer that, we need to zoom way out, beyond the planets, beyond Pluto, beyond the Kuiper Belt, into a dark, distant shell of icy leftovers called the Oort Cloud. Now, the Oort Cloud isn't something we've seen directly, it's hypothetical. But it's the best explanation we have for the bizarre long period comets that appear out of nowhere and then vanish for tens of thousands, even millions of years. Scientists believe the Oort Cloud stretches from 2000 to 100,000 astronomical units from the Sun. For context, one astronomical unit is the distance from the Earth to the Sun. That means this cloud could extend almost halfway to the next star. It's like the solar system's invisible bubble wrap, filled with icy debris left over from when the planets first formed. And this comet? It appears to have come from the deep inside that shell. Its orbit is almost half a light year long, so elongated that it takes around 3 million years to complete just one lap around the sun. That means it's been out there drifting through interstellar space for longer than humans have existed. At some point, something disturbed it. Maybe a passing star, maybe gravitational nudges from the galactic tide. 
maybe even another object in the Oort cloud. Whatever it was, it changed the comet's orbit just enough to send it falling towards the sun. But here is the twist. This isn't the comet's first trip inward. Based on orbital simulations, it's likely made a pass through the inner solar system before, millions of years ago. And after this brief visit, it will head right back out into the void and won't return for another few million years. This makes the comet more than just a curiosity. It's a direct visitor from a place we never explored, a place where temperatures are so low even nitrogen freezes solid. And it might contain material from the early solar system, unchanged since the sun was born. What secrets could be locked inside of a chunk of ice that's older than Earth itself? That's what scientists are trying to figure out. So why are scientists so excited about this frozen wanderer? It's not just because it's huge, though let's be honest, that definitely helps. At nearly 150 kilometers wide, this comet is about 50 times larger than a typical comet nucleus. Here are a few references. It's roughly the size of Rhode Island, which is about 120 kilometers across at its widest point. It's larger than some small countries like Liechtenstein, Andorra and even Barbados. It's big enough to fit Greater London inside it. Greater London spans about 1500 square kilometers, which the comet would roughly match in land area if flattened. Not that the comets are flat. That means its mass is potentially tens of thousands of times greater. In comet terms, this thing isn't just big. It's absolutely monstrous, but it's not just about size. It's about age, origin and untouched history. This comet is like a time capsule from the earliest days of the solar system, long before Earth had oceans or even a stable crust. It likely formed in the region between Jupiter and Neptune over four and a half billion years ago. Then it got kicked out during the chaos of planetary formation. Since then, it's been chilling in the deep freeze of the Oort cloud, far from the sun's radiation, protected from collisions and almost entirely unchanged. And now, it's coming home, slowly, silently, like a ghost from the solar system's past. And that gives us a rare opportunity. If we can observe this comet up close, or better yet, send a mission to it, we could analyze material that's older than Earth itself. We are talking about the original building blocks of the solar system, frozen in time. Even from afar, telescopes like Hubble and JWST can analyze its chemical makeup, track outgassing patterns and detect whether it's already beginning to wake up as it nears the sun. This could also help us solve deeper mysteries, like how water and organic compounds were delivered to Earth. Many scientists think comets brought the ingredients for life to our planet. Studying one this massive and this pristine could give us the clearest evidence yet. And here is the kicker. Because it's coming from so far out, its path isn't influenced much by the inner planets. It's not a chaotic orbit, it's stable. That means we can track it precisely and potentially study it over the course of decades. The largest comet ever discovered isn't just another icy rock. It's a missing chapter of our origin story, drifting in from the dark, ready to be read. When people hear the words giant comet and heading toward the inner solar system, it's only natural to think, should we be worried? Luckily, the answer is no. At least, not this time. This comet may be enormous, but it's not on a collision course with Earth, or any planet for that matter. In fact, its closest approach to the Sun, called perihelion, will still leave it more than a billion kilometers away from Earth. That's further out than Saturn's orbit. So, while it's technically coming closer in cosmic terms, it's still keeping a very respectful social distance. But here is where it gets interesting and a little spooky. Because of its sheer size, if an object like this were on a collision path, the damage would be apocalyptic. We are talking about an impact more massive than the one that wiped out the dinosaurs and colder, denser and faster. Even a close pass from something that big could disrupt satellites, trigger meteor storms or gravitationally disturb other objects in the outer solar system, including long dormant comets in the Oort cloud. And that raises a bigger question. How many more of these are out there? C-2014 UN271 was only discovered in 2014, hiding in years old data. It was missed by surveys until someone went digging. That means there could be tens, maybe hundreds of similar icy giants lurking in the dark, undetected, uncharted and on orbits we haven't even modeled yet. It's a reminder that even with our advanced telescopes and sky mapping AI, our knowledge of the outer solar system is still shockingly incomplete. The good news? Missions like Vera Rubin Observatory will change that. Designed to scan the entire sky every few nights, Rubin will catch faint objects on the move. 
potentially spotting future interstellar visitors years before they arrive. For now, this comet is more of a scientific gift than a threat, but it's also a cosmic warning shot. The solar system isn't a closed book. It's alive, dynamic and full of surprises we still haven't seen coming. So now that we've found this colossal cosmic iceberg, what happens next? Well, a slow, quiet descent. This comet is moving at a crawl by space standards, about 35,000 km per hour. That's a gentle cruise. It won't reach its closest point to the Sun until the year 2031. That gives scientists plenty of time to study it from afar. Already, powerful telescopes like the Hubble Space Telescope and ALMA in Chile have turned their gaze toward it, hoping to catch the moment it starts to wake up. Because as it gets closer to the Sun, even at extreme distances, the heat will cause frozen gases to sublimate, forming a coma and possibly a tail. That transformation will tell us what it's made of, and maybe how old it is. And here is where it gets exciting, this thing isn't just a space rock, it's a time capsule from the birth of the solar system. Scientists believe this comet formed over 4 billion years ago, likely in the same chaotic era that gave us Jupiter, Saturn and maybe even the building blocks of life. So by analyzing the gases it releases, things like carbon monoxide, methane or even complex organics, we get a snapshot of the ingredients that were swirling around when planets were still forming. And even more exciting? If this comet behaves itself, future missions could target similar objects. NASA has already discussed plans for comet interception missions, where spacecraft could rendezvous with deep space visitors, map their surfaces and maybe even collect samples. Imagine the science we'll get from examining a piece of untouched solar system's history, something that's been drifting undisturbed in the deep freeze for billions of years. But here is the kicker. This comet is probably just the beginning. If we found one, there are likely more, maybe even bigger comets out there, slipping past us unseen. Each one carrying secrets, each one a message from the edge. And every now and then, the universe gives us a glimpse. So the real question isn't what happens next for this comet, it's what else is out there and when will we see it coming? Thank you for watching, keep looking up.